Welcome to CEIE 360, which is Introduction to Transportation Engineering. And my name is Mohan Venigala. I'll be your instructor. And this is the course orientation. Let's get started. Learning outcomes are your takeaways from this course. And I have identified about 15 of them. Take a moment to just read through them. It's not important that you memorize them. It just gives you a heads up on where we are headed in this course. This course is organized as eight modules and each of these eight modules maps directly into the corresponding chapter number in the textbook. Depending on the size of the material and complexity of the topic, some modules may take only a week to complete and some may take more than two weeks to complete. It's my intention to make good quality videos for each of these modules. Each module will have multiple parts and each part will correspond to a particular topic. And for easy recognition, I will identify videos by module number and part ID. So what can you expect in terms of course delivery? For the first time in my academic career, I'm going to deliver this course as a hybrid combination of online and in-class activity with some flipping. I know what you're thinking about flipping. It's not what you think. By flipping, I mean when you switch in-class activity with homework, that's called flipping. And we're going to do some of that in this class. The schedule you see on your outline, course outline, is uh, is for weekly schedule and also you will see module level, uh, what which parts of the module you're going to see on that week. Most topics are delivered via videos. Uh, as I said, I'm going to spend a lot of time in making good quality videos and I thought, uh, I think they're going to last for uh, quite some time and therefore I might as well spend a good amount of time trying to make these videos. And they're available to you through Blackboard and you must watch them before coming to the class. And that will give us a head start in uh, solving problems. Of course, I'm going to do a quick recap the, in each class about the videos we have covered and we dive right into solving some problems or do some group activity together. So if needed, the class time will be adjusted accordingly, but I'm not going to make those promises. I expect you to be engaging and uh, participate in the class. Uh, I mean, without watching the videos, that is not going to be possible. So, and the class participation is graded and it uh, counts for 10% of the grade. You will see just a bit. The in-class meetings are going to be used mostly for recap of, of previous weeks or from the videos, the solving problems together, quizzes, exams and guest presentations i plan for one I, there's no confirmation yet there is going to be at least one guest presentation in the class and discussions of course as i mentioned and other group activities such as labs so that's what we are going to do in the class here's a general outline of grading there are going to be three tests you can expect it a test after every four or five weeks of instruction and the weightage of these tests increases as the time goes by. For instance, uh, midterm 1 is 20, uh, midterm 2 increases to 22, and final to 24. And quizzes and assignments are combined into one, uh, one group, and the total weightage of this one is 24% of the entire, uh, entire grade. And the quizzes are going to be individual, individually taken. Uh, th there's no collaboration allowed in class, closed book and uh, they are computer based. The assignments, uh, homework assignments, sometimes they can be assignments done in class, handed over. I expect them to be, uh, I can, uh, you can expect them to be a collaborative work. And class participation is an important thing, but more importantly, the class participation online uh, using Blackboard, Blackboard tools like blogs and discussion boards, so that is uh, strongly, strongly encouraged, not only encouraged, it is required. So this is how the grading is going to look like for this class. Student responsibilities. First and the foremost, I expect you to read the course outline, which contains the syllabus and course policies. And after all, this is going to be a contract between you and me for the next uh, few months during the semester. 
and I expect you to stay on top of the periodic announcements and updates I make via Blackboard. When you go to the course page on Blackboard, you will see all of them archived under, this, under the heading, under the tab, Announcements. So there's no reason why you would miss them. Deadlines, if there is a deadline for a homework or any other assignment, those deadlines are strictly adhered. And if you must miss a deadline, please do produce some documentary evidence for, uh, for justifying the reasons, like a doctor's letter or something. I expect you to fully proactively seek help from me when you need uh, on uh, anything like problems or uh, if you don't understand something. And what I mean by proactive is that if the class, if the assignment is due at 7.30 a.m. when the class meets and don't come to me for help at 7.15 a.m. Uh, for that is due, for the assignment that's due 15 minutes later, that is not being proactive and uh, how to reach me and all those things we are going to talk in the next slide so gmu honor code i'm uh, if if i see any violations i will not hesitate to report to the uh, gmu honor committee and i have done it in the past so hopefully I, I won't have to do it in your class if you must uh, have some special accommodations please do give me some advance notice Reaching out, here's my preferred order. My office hours are posted and TS office hours will be posted by the time our class meets for the first time. And if you need more help, you feel free to walk into my office if my door is open. If it takes less than five minutes, it's easier to deal with it at that moment rather than you know uh, wait a long time till the office hours or so. My office is located in ENGR 2232. Uh, phone is bad because I may or may not be in the office when at the time you call and if you leave message sometimes I don't check them in the in time and that's why email is better but again when you reach out by email do not send a very long email about how uh, you're approaching a problem I will not be able to decipher what you're doing wrong unless I see your work so it is actually not going to help you or me in, in time-wise if you send long emails about problems especially. Some things like a wording explanation about a problem, that should be fine by email. So anything related to problem solving, I prefer to see you in person. That is, uh, that is the best way uh, to save time for you and me. Class-related questions, sometimes, you know, instead of email, it may be better to post on discussion boards on Blackboard. That way others can also benefit. Otherwise, if we have a long email exchange about one problem, I may have to cut and paste on the bulletin board. If But if it happens on the bulletin board itself, everybody can get benefit by that. So once again, as I said, it is difficult to do problems by email. So the textbook, this is one of the best textbooks I have ever seen both as a student a long time ago and now as a professor. Uh, if not, uh, no, it's not one of the best. It is the best textbook, perfect for an undergraduate introductory course in transportation. I haven't seen any better book than this. And topics are perfectly chosen and well organized. Oh, by the way, the book itself is Principles of Highway Engineering and Traffic Analysis by Dr. Mannering, who is he's at Purdue University and Dr. Washburn, who is at University of Florida. So these topics are perfect. There are eight chapters. Each one of them maps into our eight modules, uh, very well balanced in terms of practice and theory. And it's definitely a keeper if you do buy it. It's a required textbook, by the way. How you're going to get access to it, it's up to you. But if you do buy it, I think you probably want to keep it. There are other important and relevant books, but the good thing is you don't need to buy them because your textbook already incorporates the material from these textbooks, but you should know the existence of and how to refer to these codes of practice. These books are called codes of practice. The first one is Manual on Uniform Traffic Control Devices. Second one is A Policy on Geometric Design of Highways and Streets. And the third is Highway Capacity Manual. Uh, before I explain what they are, there is something I want, uh, something important I wanted to mention. I fully understand that I am providing you with a lot of material. It can be overwhelming for you at times. Therefore, you might be at a loss in figuring out which material is important and which is not, especially from testing point of view. 
To help you out on this, I will be identifying all the important material with this stamp. My reason for marking the material as important will be simple. It is relevant to the learning objectives. While watching the videos, you should keep an eye, alert eye for this stamp and you will not see this stamp on PDF files of the same material. Allow me to demonstrate how I will use this important, important stamp. I've shown you these three codes of practice before. From left to right, they are referred by practitioners as MUTCD, The Green Book, and HCM. It is okay for you to refer to these books in the same way, but it is important for you to remember the actual titles of the publishers, actual titles and publishers of these codes. MUTCD, it stands for Manual on Uniform Traffic Control Devices and it's 2009 edition which we are we covering in this class and it is published by Federal Highway Administration. The Green Book is a policy on geometric design of highways and streets. It has to be verbatim, a policy on ge geometric design of highways and streets. This is 2011 edition and it's published by American Association of State Highway and transportation officials are ASHTO. HCM, it's Highway Capacity Manual. It's published by the Transportation Research Board and the, and the year of this publication is 2010. By asking you to memorize the title of the book and the publisher's name, you might think I am being silly. No, I'm not. Green book was not always green. It started out as a red book and then it became a bl blue book and what do you call the third color? Is it dark red? Uh, crimson maybe? And then there is this green book, actual green book that is in 1984 to 1994. The name green book came from this, this version of the book. And in 2001, they changed the cover again that they kept the green at the bottom just to keep the title going, the green book title. And at the top, there is a picture. In 2011, they changed the cover, which you just saw a little while ago. And that is light green cover. And uh, who knows what's going to be in year 2021. So that's going, we, we had to wait and see till that time. It is important to know the title of the book and publisher of the book. And uh, that's where I'm coming from.